G'day, how you going? So, 2022, Jerry, huh? it's all over. Yes, it's all over, Jerry. So, what did I learn this year? So, let's go through it. I wear pretty much a lot of hats. So, let's start off with the Canon. The first uh, photo shoot I did was with this old Canonette from the 60s, 50s, I don't know when. Uh, it's a classic. It looked beautiful, that's why I bought it. It's a little bit hard, you've got a focus zone and everything like that. But, um, yeah, I took some good shots there. Jerry, do you see the cannon net? Look at the cannon net, Jerry. Hmm? Do you see? Yes, Jerry, the cannon net. <clears throat> now, I don't know what it is, but some of my best shots this year were with film, uh, I thought anyway. Some of the good shots I did here, just the smoothness and the creaminess, the black and white creaminess of it, and it just, uh, yeah, I, I found it, um, for an old camera like this, <laughs> it's amazing, really, uh, to get clear sharp shots like that uh, and I was zone focusing as well so because it was impossible to focus because you can't see what you're focusing on because that viewfinder there is not really a um, like a focusing it's not a rangefinder and of course always Jerry <laughs> always takes the best shots on film she really is a 1990s supermodel <laughs> Jerry because uh, she just loves film The next photo shoot was just a beach day with Jerry <laughs> and I think I was just trying to say that yeah the EM10 Mark II is just a perfect kind of you know everyday um, beach camera you know even small compact so yeah I really took some I took some really nice shots there that that day uh, yeah I mean it's not the best um, yeah the it's a good stills camera uh, for still shots if you try and get into continuous um, autofocus, don't worry about it. You really don't use this camera for continuous autofocus. If anything, put it on single autofocus and low sequential shutter speed. You'll get better shots. Your uh, your finger would be faster than the continuous autofocus. It's just not good. Um, you're better off just doing single autofocus, and you'll catch um, better shots that way. <laughs> just just manually by yourself, you know catching that moment. If you're going to miss a few, you're going to miss a few. But yeah, with the continuous autofocus, geez, I missed heaps more than what I did with just single autofocus. You know, so yeah, but that was a good day out with Jerry. Okay, sorry about that. The sound just cut out. Bloody Sony. So here I am pointing to my Jim Beam hat because um, this is when I was the drunk photographer and ended up buying this Russian, <laughs> I don't know what the hell, late night eBay drunk buying. It's a twin lens reflex from Russia Lubitel 166B or something like that <laughs> I wasn't very good at this and I took some pretty average shots I think this is the camera the camera was so old and it was pretty and it wasn't very well done looking down was all right it's just that it wouldn't focus properly so I think it was broken really uh, yeah a bit of fun just, you always got to experiment put a different hat on but if you're going to buy one buy a good one you know that's like i always say when you buy old cameras buy a good one because you get frustrated when you know you try and go cheap and buy uh, one second hand that hasn't been tested next photo shoot was the zoo <laughs> i got a zoo pass for that year at the start of this year it would have been just expired actually and i took out the old classic clunker tamron from the 70s First time I took it out, I think. I might have shot it the year before in my backyard, but at the zoo, and I got some of the best shots I've ever taken. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, from this old classic from the 80s or 70s or whenever. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, a lot of them were filled the frame, so what can you do? Um, you're always going to get a good shot filling the frame, but it was so sharp, and not sharp in the sense that it was like, you know, Sony sharp, you know, it was just beautiful sharp you know that softness around the edge sharp and um, yeah I, I processed it in uh, Luminar 4 I think and got some really good um, you know black and whites and colors and yeah I got a lot of good, good feedback from this one so um, yeah a lot of good feedback on Instagram about uh, the shots so that's why I really like I mean I probably should get the Olympus version of it the 300 but yeah that was um, that was a that was a good day out so this one was when I got into the books uh, I bought one book from George Byrne an Aussie guy living in LA and um, yeah it's really I like that kind of industrial street 
uh, architecture style with lots of colors and stuff and I, I just really fell in love with that kind of street photography over you know heavily processed over processed but yeah artistically though like not but just simple stuff like just street lamp posts whatever you know so this one kind of got me on the road to that industrial disease project that I I want and that I'm on I'm kind of doing you know with industrial estates so with this one uh, I went to Bondi I think yeah and took some shots there um, some turned out all right uh, I mean I wouldn't call it exactly George Burns style uh, you probably need to do a little bit more editing in post uh, but yeah kind of got the rough idea I think this one was probably the best okay then it was Australia day when I went out and took some shots with Jerry at Parramatta on the boardwalk there uh, I really liked a lot of these shots uh, looking back yeah I thought some of these architectural shots and just you know street shots in general turned out pretty good yeah uh, I think my photograph I think my photography was improving a lot and you can yeah I, I think you can tell there my photography was was Im improving you know looking back yeah I mean they're not award-winning yeah. shots but <laughs> Uh, I can see in my own progression, yeah, I can, I'm improving. So, yeah, that was a fun day out with Jerry. Now, this is my little project that I started last this year, uh, industrial disease. Was it this year, was it? At the start of the year, I think. And, yeah, I really like just the mundane boringness of it. And I think some of the shots turned out good. I got, got some good feedback, actually. Um, Especially like from a lot of other photographers on YouTube uh, in America, and uh, they were saying, "Yeah, it's how did you, um, you know, get really good shots like that?" I mean, these are just basic uh, shots. I think it's just the, the composition, really, what it is, and it's that it's using the color. This is this is what I wanted to do more with that, you know, that kind of George Byrne uh, style, uh, but in an industrial area. So that's why I called it like industrial disease. But I was really proud of this uh, video. Uh, I thought it was one of my best videos. Didn't get many hits, but <laughs> I don't think any of my videos got many hits. But yeah, it's just some of the shots were really good. Yeah, I thought, and I thought I would keep that theme going throughout my, um, you know, my hobby. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a career. It's just a hobby. So, but yeah, it's good to concentrate on one. Maybe that might eventually become my, uh, you know. What do they call it? My swag or something? No, my shtick. Uh, that's a Jewish word, I think. Shtick. Hey, Jerry. Shtick. Hmm? Where's the shtick? All right. So I went back to the beach on this one uh, with Jerry. <laughs> this one's the dog beach, uh, and it's planes as well. So I called it, you know, planes, dogs, planes, and automobiles. So I took my 14 to 150 because my <laughs> my bazooka was still broken I remember I broke it the year before uh, well I didn't break it the bloody thing broke by itself so I took that and the old um, Tamron clunker and just took some photos on the beach with Jerry and when I got there I realized oh wow look at all the planes and yeah just took some you know good fun 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 shots of planes you know and Jerry on the beach so that was a nice day out too Okay, so this is when Jerry wanted to buy a camera, so I bought her the Insta360. Hey, Jerry, this is your first camera, Jerry. Hmm? Hey, you your first camera. <laughs> yeah, I bought an Insta360 on this video, so I'm testing it out, and I realized I could use this, uh, Jerry could use this for a camera. So this is the beginning of when Jerry um, first took up photography. Hey, Jerry, and you became a famous photographer. A dog photographer I think that's in the next video <laughs> yeah but the insta360 go good camera uh, shit sound shit battery <laughs> there you go there's the whole video summarizing three three words okay this video is just me being a smart ass with the new om1 came out <laughs> I think I was being a smart ass saying yeah I got the om1 the original <laughs> That was when the OM1 came out. When was that? That was around February when the OM1, the new OM1 came out. Yeah, it seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Well, I, no, I didn't buy the OM1 because the M1 Mark II is good enough for me. <laughs> I mean, I probably will get it one day. 
or I might even just skip that and go straight to the Canon R5 <laughs> I don't know uh, I think the main thing we're in is in why I don't flip over to um, other brands is because of the the learning of it I've learnt this now I've learnt Olympus so it's probably wise to get the OM1 if that's their flagship now purely really just for the for this um, computational bloody is that a bird is that a plane is that a is that a train really that's the only thing that I would probably appreciate in the upgrade I don't really care about all the other stuff um, maybe I'll wait for the OM2 if they add a bit more megapixels you know maybe 30 megapixels and catch up to the rest of the world now speaking of OM1 <laughs> my next outing was at the bird hide I uh, took the EM1 Mark II and the fourth was I finally fixed it so I took it out and did a test run and yeah um, it's ironic how the OM1 just came out because I probably didn't need it because <laughs> trying to get um, winners with this was good and I didn't mind it I got some winners uh, but the continuous autofocus and tracking the whole 90% of everything with um, bird photography I reckon it's the focus bloody that's why the you know the bird recognition and all the computational computer stuff inside these things um, really is the the breakthrough with Olympus and all the other cameras it's the autofocus now the way I looked at it I got some good shots I mean I didn't get the winner um, and but that's all right I don't mind that's why I stuck with it uh, I don't mind uh, a 40 percent hit rate you know I don't want a 90 percent hit rate I mean I would like it and I probably, you know, when I do get the OM1, I probably go, what the hell was I waiting for, you know? But it's good to fail sometimes, you know? You know, you don't want to, you don't want to go out there and be like a robot. Uh, you know, you, you want to get a few shit shots in there. <laughs> it makes all the good shots even better. So, hey, Jerry, hmm? you don't care. Okay, can you see me? Then this one was when the moon, Jerry was howling at the moon. So I utilized the 400 millimeter, which is a, an 800 millimeter equivalent um, because of the crop factor two and just took some uh, photos of the moon. I tried the high res mode and I don't know, I'm not the greatest at this. So I better put, um, there you go. This is an appropriate hat for that, stars. <laughs> Star Trek. <laughs>